Okay, so let's look at the module six instruction set for ARM assembly language. Okay, so this is the uh, the table of content of this module. Okay, first you will learn about the assembly language basics. Okay, so what is the assembly language looks like? Okay, and then after that we will learn about a few instruction. Okay, that are available in ARM assembly program. Okay, we have the register movement, how to uh, move a data from one register to one register. Okay, you will look at the what are the instruction available. And, and then after that, okay, you will learn about the general data processing. Okay, instruction, which is it, it will consist the arithmetic processing, logical processing, and subtraction, uh, multiplication, etc. And then load store instruction okay you will learn about how to load a uh, immediate data how to load a uh, data from memories and etc branch instruction and others instruction okay so let's look at the assembly language basics okay why okay there is the the introduction of the assembly language okay what you need to expect in, in order to write a uh, assembly language so for writing an ARM assembler program, okay, you can choose either you're going to use an ARM assembler or GNU assembler. Okay, there are two assemblers available in, in order to write the assembly language. Okay, this is only for the ARM. Lah. Okay, either you're going to use an ARM assembler or a GNU assembler. So in this class here, we'll, we will be focusing on using the ARM assembler. Okay. And each of these assembler here, either you use your ARM or GNU, will have a different syntax. Okay, so ARM assembler, the syntax are quite uh, different compared to GNU assembler. And it is impossible to compile a program using a different assembler. Means that if you mix up the assembly, like, even though you use the same assembly language, but using the different assembler, so you cannot mix up the syntax. Okay, if you mix up the syntax, then your when you compile it, you will have a syntax error. Okay, so this is a general instruction syntax for assembly language. Okay, first we have the label here. Okay, so this label is optional. Okay, this label is used to determine the address of the instruction. Okay. Actually, you can put an address here, okay, the address of your instruction in front of here, but usually we not use the addresses, but we'll, we change it by using a label, by using a name, okay? And then we have the operation followed by, after the label, we have the operation, okay? This operation here is actually a mnemonic which can be an instruction or pseudo ops okay so operation is always a mnemonic okay which is you know the things that you're going to do okay either you're going okay either you're going to load a data add a data uh store the data and etc so that that is what we call it as a operation and after the operation Okay, it is followed by suffix. Okay, so this first suffix is uh, optional. Okay, so this suffix is used to modify the operation suffix. Okay, sometimes, okay, if you're going to check uh, the status register flag after you execute a certain instruction, okay, you can put this suffix here to tell the CPU, okay, to tell the processor, okay, I'm going to check what are the status register value okay after i execute this instruction because sometimes okay then there is an assembler uh if you not put a suffix okay it will not tell you what are the status register after you execute your instruction okay so to look at what the flag affected every time you uh execute a certain instruction so you need to put a suffix after your mnemonic okay later we'll see a, a few suffix that you can use okay in order to check 
the status register etc and last but not least is operates okay so this is what the instruction operates on so operates is actually is the consists of the destination register and the source register okay where is the data is coming from and where the data is going to store to okay so that what we call as a operand so th this is the general instruction syntax for assembly language so all of the assembly language must follow this syntax here okay now moving on to the next slide so let's look at the arm assembler syntax okay so this is the arm assembler format okay it follow the the this uh, general instruction here syntax here which is you have a label and then followed by op op is your operation or your mnemonics then you have the operands and sometimes you can put a comment after that okay so this comment is very useful uh in order to help other people know what are you going to do in your programming okay so it is a best uh, practice to put a comment every time you uh, do an instruction okay but because why easy for you to do a troubleshooting if there is a problem occurs during the execute or if the output is not as as expected okay you can look at this comment and see oh so it's supposed to do something like this but the output is not as expected so you can change the instruction after that all right and so this label here is recognized by being uh, at the first column okay is if you put a label at the first column so the compiler will know or the assembler will know okay this is a belong to the label okay and while in order to put a comment okay you need to identify by this semicolon okay every time you put a semicolon and after the things that you write after that will be a comment okay so this one is a comment and this is another comment and this is another comment so this is a example of a arm assembler syntax okay you see here sorry okay so this is the first column okay which is this is your label and this is a second column which is the operand okay you see this is all the mnemonics here okay you know this belong to operations and then this is the second column which is your operands okay you can see r1 okay so this is the uh, destination register and this is where the value coming from and etc and last but not least the comments Okay, so this is the S arm assembler looks like. Okay, moving on to the next slide. So let's look at how the GNU assembler looks like. So the GNU assembler format similar to arm assembler, except that for the label, it is recognized by this colon here. Okay, the labels should be followed by this colon okay colon symbol okay when you put this this symbol here so the compiler or assembler know that okay so this one is belong to label and then after that, followed by the operation operands and comment for the comment we use this alias here or sometimes we we can do the double slash okay you can do double slash mean d is for Okay, so this is an example of the GNU assembler programming. Okay, first column. Okay, every time you look at this, so you know that this is belong to label, and this is the mnemonics or the operation. This is column number three. This is for the operands, and 
last but not least, D is for chromatin. Okay. Next. Okay, let's look at the assembler directive. Okay, there are two general type of statement in assembler program. Okay, in every time you, you do a program, assembly program, okay, there are two type of statement. One we call it as a instructions, and the other one we call it as a pseudo operation, or sometimes we call it as a assembler directive. Okay, so this is the example of instruction which is this instruction directly generate a code, okay? So every time you, you execute this instruction, okay, you will expect an output, okay? After you execute this instruction. Okay, while the directive, it won't generate any code after you do compiling or you do that, okay? So this is an example of the direct assembler directive dot text dot four byte blah 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 okay this, this the dot four byte mean that you're going to reserve four byte data to this location okay so this instruction and directive should never be used as a label okay you cannot use mov dot text dot four byte as a label Okay, you cannot use this mnemonics or this uh, assembler directive uh, as your label. Okay, so this is an example of assembler directive. Okay, this is for the GNU. Okay, if a GNU, you need to uh, start with the dot followed by the directive name. Okay, while for the ARM directive, okay, all the ARM directive will start with uh, this uh, uppercase name, okay? So, this is the explanation of what happened. Okay, for example, here you have text, okay? So, this, the expression, if you use this ARM directive text, means that you are going to signify the beginning of code or constant. Okay, so this one, uh, okay, I just uh, tell you which one did, that we always use, all right? So this one we always use, EQU, okay, which is you're going to set the symbol with a constant value, okay? So this is the ARM directive that you always use. Okay, sometimes you're going to declare the data, either it's a 8-bit data, 16-bit data, or 30 bit data, you can use this DCB, DCW, or DCB. Okay. And END, okay. Sometimes you, you can put the END at the end of your program, or sometimes you, you just leave it. Okay. No need to put the end, also can. Okay. So this is when every time you put the END, means that it is the end of the program. Uh, professor, I have one question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, is there any like a table of contents where we can understand the binary uh, arithmetic operation instruction or uh, decimal operations, things like that, or the uh, logical operations? A table where we can understand what is the function of uh, the addition, submission, things like that. Sorry. Okay. I, are you saying this table here, something like this? Yeah. Yeah, correct. Yeah, this one. This one. Uh, okay, so we have uh, this is the instruction that you uh, available for the ARM for Tech M4. Okay, later we'll see one by one what this instruction do. Okay, and then this is the things lah. Okay, you can see here MOB stand for move. You know that you're going to move from one register to another register. Inshallah, bro. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, so let's look at the basic directive that you, we always use. Okay, for example here, if you're going to define a constant, okay, so you, you can use it by using the dot .equ or just equ, okay? If you put something like this, dot .equ enable underscore flag ox1 means that every time you use this enable underscore flag, it equal to this number here. 
Okay. So this is how you're going to define a constant with a label or with a names by using the EQU directive assembler. Okay. And then use the dot one byte and dot four byte to define the byte size and word size variable respectively. Okay. For example, okay, num one. Okay. So this is a label dot four byte means that you're going to reserve a four byte to num one and the value is this value here one two three four five six seven and eight okay so this is the first byte this is the second byte third byte and fourth byte so every time you call a num one okay so you know that this num one here equal to this value okay and for, for uh, another example, okay, num2, okay, so this is a label. Uh, okay, you're going to reserve one byte for the num2, and what is would be the number? A, B. So every time you, you call a num1, a num2, so the value will be A, B. Okay, the addresses started at A, B. Okay, if you're going to define a string, okay, you can use the S, A, S, C, I, Z. Okay, so string here. Uh, do we have a string here? Okay, this one. Okay, in the ARM directive, you can use the DCB. Okay, this symbol here, ASCII string followed by zero. Okay. So when you put something like this, okay, message dot ASCII hello means that every time you use the MSD here, label MSD, it will return this value here, this string here. And last but not least, use dot space to define unitalized memory space so this one here in the uh, gnu eh? gnu assembler for the arm assembler okay you just use this directive only All right for example yeah dot equ okay so you just simply write equ and the label names followed by the what is the value Okay, so that's why it's for the uh, assembler directive. Okay, next we are going to move to the next one, instruction suffixes. Okay, so we have a few suffixes. Okay, so first, let's look at this one here. Okay, this symbol S, okay, every time you see the symbol, suffix symbol with S, means that you're going to update your APSR. What is the APSR register? Your application program status register. We already learned in the previous uh, module. Okay, so this inside of this APSR, there will be a flex. Okay, so this flex here will uh, show what are the status after you execute a certain instruction, either. It is an N negative value, overflow, carry, zero, and etc. Okay, we have a few flags inside our APSR that we already learned previously. Okay, for examples, ADDS. Okay, so now you look here, S. Okay, means that, okay, you tell the CPU. Okay, after you execute this value here and the CPU need to update the APCR. Okay, usually if you put something like the ADD R1 Okay, so what this thing to here? Okay, you're going to add this number with R1 number and put the result to R1. But if you not put S after this mnemonic, okay, if you not put the suffix S, means the status register will not update it, okay, after you execute this one. But if you put the ADDS, okay, you have the ADDS, okay, it do the same thing. Add this number with 
R1, put the result at R1, and at the same time, the APSR, which is the Application Program Status Register, will be updated accordingly. So you will see the flag will be changed according to these results here after you do the addition process. Okay, that, that is for the S. Lah. Okay, the S suffix stand for to update the program status register flex. Okay, then we have another suffix. Okay, which is each EQ stand for equal NE not equal CS CC MI PL GELT etc. Okay, later we will see more detail on this what this uh, suffix do. Okay, so this description okay of these suffixes here means that okay this is always used every time you going to do a uh, what we call here a branch okay every time you're going to check a condition either the condition is met or not okay so every time you use the you do the you're going to make a if else statement okay loop statement okay so you're going to use this suffix here okay to check whether the condition is met or not okay so example here b and e Okay, B stand for E is B is branch. Okay, and if you put B and E, okay, as I, I just uh, put something like this. Okay, if you put B, Okay, so this long part here is an address. Okay, the, this uh, where this ad, uh, long part here, it, it is actually an address where I use a label. Okay, so if you put a long part here. Okay, sorry. LDR1 R0 for a long time. Okay, so let's look at the first and second. Okay, if you use this one here, B long part means that it will always go to this long part without checking any condition. Okay, if you put this B here without any suffix after that, means that it always branch to this location called long part. Okay, so it will go to here and do this instruction. And if you use this B and E long part, means that if the flag not equal okay is zero okay then after that it will go to long part okay if the condition is not met what happen it will never go to this uh location here okay so that is the different using the only a b branch and b with a suffix after that okay so let's do another example okay as suffix to set the apsr flex okay if you put something like this a d d s r 0 r 1 so what happened here you're going to add r 1 with r 0 put the result to r 0 and after that the apsr will be updated Okay, if you just simply put ADD without the S here, suffix S, R0, R1. So what happened? R1 will be add to with R0, put the result to R0, but your APSR will not be updated. Okay, once we've updated your status register flag and the other is not updated. Okay, and for this one here, okay, for as I mentioned, from this one here okay so it is depending on the condition whether the condition is met or not if the condition is met then after that you will branch to the location here okay if not met then you will do the next instruction 
Okay, so this is how, how the, the suffix works. Okay, next we go to the unified assembly language or sometimes we call it as a UAL. Okay, why we need to use a UAL? Because it allow, allow a better portability between architecture. So that's why the UAL was introduced. Okay, so means that using the same syntax for both make it easier to port application between the ARM code and thumb code. Because for the ARM assembly language, okay, I, we have another language that you can use for your ARM programming. Okay, one by using the ARM code and the second one you can use the thumb code. That is the instruction set architecture for ARM processor. Okay, so that's why the developer come uh, the manufacturer come out with the UAL. Okay, so that you can mix up between the ARM coding or thumb coding in order to do the ARM assembly language. Okay, so the traditional thumb syntax can still be used. Not that some, not that some of them change APSR without the S suffix. Okay, so this is the traditional thumb syntax. Okay, and the, if you use the thumb syntax, okay, the APS, APSR will be updated implicitly even though you didn't ask the CPU to update the APSR. But for the this one here, okay, this is uh, for the UAL, okay, so you you going to, okay, you will put the S Okay, in order to ask the APSR to update it flags after you execute this instruction. Okay, so what are, okay, if you can see here, the different here, okay, by using traditional thumb syntax and UAL equivalent, okay, you see this one here only involve of two registers. Okay, you use a two operands. But this one you use a three operands, okay? One for destination and two from source, okay? You can put something like this A and D S R two R zero R one means that you end value from R one and R zero, okay? You end them and then after that put it to R two. So this is what you do U A S unified assembler. Okay, but by using a traditional, you only have one destination and one source. Okay, you cannot put to another register. If you go, in, for example, if you use this one here and want to use put to the register R2, so what happened here, you need to do, uh, to have a two instruction lah. One, A and D, R0, R1. Okay, you end them together. And then after that, move. R2 with R0. So this instruction here actually similar to this instruction. Okay, this one only needs to have one instruction, but this one you need to have two instructions to do the same things. Okay, so you can specify whether to use a thumb or thumb to instruction by adding suffixes of dot n or dot w. Okay, so an, another young examples here. Okay, we dot. Okay, you have a suffix s, and then now if you put something like this, means that it's a 16 bit thumb by default. And if you put the a d d s dot n, another suffix here, means that it is a 16 bit thumb with a narrow. So we know that narrow is a 16 bit. And if you put the ADDS with dot W, means it, it is a 32 bit and we are using the thumb to instruction. Okay. So by you putting this dot N and dot W, you can choose either you're going to use a thumb instruction, ISA, or thumb to ISA. Okay. And the 32 bit thumb to instruction can be half word align. Okay. So this is how to do the half word align. 
okay and most of the 16 bit instruction can only access register r0 to r7 and 32 bit thumb instruction do not have this limitation okay if you use the uh, 16 bit instruction you can only access from r0 to r7 we already uh explain this okay we already covered this in the previous module so this is an example of the instruction set available in the arm assembly language okay so if you're going to do a you uh, to move a data from one register to another register you can use a mob okay move a data from one register to another register or mvn okay so move not mobt immediate to top and mobw half word immediate okay later we will see more detail on this part if you're going to do a logical uh operation okay you can use a a and d to do a, a logical and bic to do a some bit clear in the certain bit location EOR for exclusive or ORR for all instruction, ORN for all, not. And for the multiply, okay, we have a few multiply instruction available. MUL for the multiply, MLL multiply, and then you accumulate the values, MMLS for multiply, subtract, and then you have the small UMUL, SMLAL, and etc. And for the arithmetic, okay, which is tambah tolak bagi darab or addition and subtraction, okay, you can use the ADC to add with carry, ADD add without a carry, RSB reserve subtract, okay, later we'll see how the reserve subtract work, RSC reserve subtract with carry, and SBC subtract with carry, SUB subtract without a carry, and then we have the data shifting. Okay, to rotate the data to the left or to the right. Okay, there are few instruction you can use for the data shifting, either ASR, this is an arithmetic shift right. And you have the LSL, logical shift right, LSR, logical, sorry, LSL for the logical shift left, LSR, logical shift right, ROR, rotate right, and RRX, rotate to carry. Okay, let, later we will see how this data shifting words and you have the to compare okay to do a comparison between two registers okay you can use the cmn cmp tst or teq and to divide okay for the arm okay we can use the there is an instruction for division okay for the avr uh, assembly language there are there is no division uh, what we call instruction but for arm context yes arm assembly language we have the division okay s which is sdiv and udiv this is for the sign number and this is to divide an unsigned number okay and then we have the reverse okay so rb okay later we'll see this one here how to reverse the bit okay is it by to reverse 16 bit or to reserve 8 bit or to reserve a 32 bit numbers okay and then if you're going to extend you either you're going to extend the sign or to extend the zero you can use this uh, instruction here okay and this is for the bit field memory access okay for the memory access okay the most thing that we always uh, the uh, the instruction that we always use is this instruction here pop and push okay which and str okay to store register push, pop and push is used in the stack stacking the memory okay by using a stack pointer okay we can use a pop and push instruction and branch of course this one here you always you will always use this branch here because this branch here Every time you're going to do the for loop, if else statement, switch case statement, while loop, okay, you will use this instruction frequently. 
okay, and other instruction such as okay, CLZ to count lady zero, break point, and etc. Okay, this is more important lah. MRS and MSR. Okay, to read a data from one reg a special reg a purpose register to your register or to write a data from your register to your uh, special register. Okay, you can use the MRS and MSR. Okay, so that is the, uh, what we call here, the instruction set that you will learn, okay, throughout these courses here. Okay, so next we are going to look at the addressing modes. Okay, so there, there are a few addressing modes available in ARM assembly language. Okay, first thing first, let's look at the first addressing mode, okay, which is register to register or direct addressing mode, direct register addressing mode. Okay, so this one here, when you call it a register to register, means that you're going to move a data, okay, from one register to another register, or to take a data from one register to another register. Okay, contoh example is MOV R0 R1, means that it involves of two register, okay, one destination and one uh, source register. Okay, so this is a source register and this is your destination. So you're going to move value from R1, put it to R0. Okay, similar to ADD. Okay, so this is another register to register addressing mode. Okay, because it involves of two registers. And then we have the literal, or sometimes we call it as an immediate. Okay, you see here, move R0, hashtag 15. Okay, so every time you come across with this hashtag symbol, okay, means that it is belong to immediate data. Okay, what is the immediate data? Immediate data is a data is from outside data. Okay, a constant data from outside, which is not the data is not stored inside either of your memory or in the register. So we call it as a immediate data, data from the outside. So when you put something like this, move R0, hashtag 15. So what happened here is, so this is your R0. And what happened after you do this uh, uh, operation here? So the value 15, okay will be stored to your R0. Of course, lah, this one in decimal number. Why decimal? Because hashtag 15, so this is a decimal. If you put hashtag OX15, and so you know that this is belong to hexadecimal because of this symbol. Okay, so if you put something like this, it's wrong lah, because inside of the register, Okay, the value always in hexadecimal means that you need to change the 15 to hexadecimal. Then after that, you store to your R0. So the value would be 0. F. D is the correct value and D is the wrong value. Okay, another one here. Another example. Okay, for the immediate value, you see ADDR0 R1 hashtag 15. Means that you, you have one immediate value going to add with R1 and put the result to R0. So this is what happened after you execute this line here. Okay, then we have the index base or register indirect. Okay, means that LDR, okay, you're going to load from location point by this register here. Okay, so that's why we call it as a register indirect because R1 here, is pointed to an address. Okay, if every time you see this uh, symbol here, followed by your register value, uh, your register means that you're going to take the value inside of the register and go to that location. 
for example, okay. For example, L D R R zero R one, and your R one is one thousand. Okay. So what happened here is first, okay, you go to address one thousand. Okay, and this is your memory. Okay, go to address one thousand. After you go here, take the value and put it to R0. So that's why we call it as an indirect. Okay. You not simply put, okay, if you if you put something like this, R0 equal to 1000, wrong. Okay. Because this is the address pointed by R1. So you need to go to ad address pointed by R1, which is address 1000, go to this that location, take the value, put it to your R0. So that is a, a register indirect. And register indirect with offset. Okay, so this one here, you have an offset. Okay, so what happened? If I put something like this. Okay, so let's assume that the R1 is thousand so when you put the offset here means that okay thousand plus four equal to thousand four go to address thousand four take the value and put it to r0 so this is what we call as a register indirect with offset okay and this one register indirect pre incrementing okay so you incremented the value uh, this uh, location first and then after that you go to that uh, location put to your r0 and post in that auto initial okay register indirect with post incrementing means that okay first you go to address point by r1 which is address 1000 after you take the value put to r0 then after that your r1 now change become 1004 okay that's why we call it as a post incrementing okay you go first to that location take the value and after that you increment the address by four. Okay, and this one here, register indirect, register index. Okay, so it will look at this R2. What is the R2 value? And you index to the location of your R1. Okay, and register indirect index with a scaling. Okay, so this one here, okay, you need to do the logical shift left. How many times? Two times. And then after that, you offset with your R1 addresses, takes the value, put it to, to R0. Okay, so this is the addressing mode. So you need to know lah what happened for each of these symbols here. Okay, you need to know each of these symbols represented to what addressing mode. Okay, and after that, if I give you the uh, instruction, uh, the program, and you're going to find out what uh, the result every time you execute the program, no problem. You can answer it very easily. Okay, now let's look at the Indianness. Okay, again, <laughs> we emphasize on the Indianness, how to, to store data to our memory. Okay, so this is the memory okay bear in mind that even though our register okay even though the arm register is 32 bit but the memory size is only 8 bit okay this is uh, for the memory okay so your memory 8 bit but your register always 32 bit okay so that's why we need to uh, emphasize on this Indianness, how to store the data to the memory, either by using the bit Indian 
on Little India. Okay, for example, you have a 16 bit data. Okay, which is consists of this value here 03 EF. And how you're going to store this data to your memory? Since your memory is a bit, it is a 16 bit, so you need to divide by 8 bit by 8 bit chunks. Lah. Okay, and now if you use the big Indian, so what happened? Okay. For the big Indian, you see, uh, where is my caption? Okay, the big, okay, the most significant byte will be stored first, followed by the least significant bit. Okay, you see the, the addresses here. Okay, this is the first address and this is the second address. This is for by using the big Indian. Lah. Okay, if uh, for the little Indian, okay. The smallest or the least significant bit will be stored first, and then after that, followed by most significant bit. Okay, so this for the 16 bit. What about if you have a 32 bit number? Okay, how are you going to store to your memory? Okay, again, your memory is 8 bit, and this register here consists of 32 bit number. So, what are you going to do? You need to divide that lah. Okay, to 4 byte by using a bit Indian. Okay, store the most significant bit and then follow by the sec most, uh, second MSB and the least significant bit will be stored last. This is by using the bit Indian. If you use the little Indian, okay, so what happened? We store the least significant bit first to our memory address and lastly, store the most significant. Okay, so this is the way CPU save the data to the memory. Either going, you are going to use a big Indian or little Indian. Okay. I think we stop up until here. Okay, the rest of the the module we will continue after the semester break okay any question from you guys